Hi, good morning. My name is Kylie Martins. I'm a sophomore here at Emory majoring in chemistry. Um, today's presentation will be about a Venus sativa, um, which is commonly known as oat, and it's in the Poaceae family. So a brief overview of this plant. It was first discovered in Egy ancient Egyptian ruins over 4,000 years ago, and it was first um, recorded in De Materia Medica by Dioscorides. There are many traditional and ethno-medicinal uses, um, and a lot of this um, medicinal activity is based on um, active chemical constituents found in oats, <coughs> mainly beta-glucans and avena anthramides, which I will discuss in a bit. And um, there are a wide variety of uses, of medicinal uses used currently um, today. Um, if, and as a brief botanical description, um, oats, um, the oat plant um, is basically made up of tillers, which are lateral shoots that project about two feet off of the ground. Um, it's an annual grass, and um, at the top of each tiller there's a panicle, and within the panicle there are spikelets. So you can see from the picture over there um, that there are different kind of spikelets. Um, there are triple kernel spikelets and small ones. And um, Within each spikelet there contains about one to two oat groats, and the groats are um, basically harvested. They're harvested when the um, plant turns yellow and um, then they can be processed and dehulled and then um, they are processed into flaked oats, rolled oats, steel cut oats, um, many different forms that we're more familiar with. And um, so as you can see from the distribution map of the United States, oats are very common. Um, they're very hardy plants. They can grow um, in cool, moist areas um, mainly, and they use self-pollination, and their pollinators are, um, they're pollinated by the wind and by insects. <clears throat> so some traditional uses, um, their primary use is, um, they're first used as uh, fodder, which is animal food and as animal bedding. Um, so when they were brought over to America um, by the Spanish colonists, uh, they were, that was their main primary use. Um, they eventually evolved into a food source, but they were scorned um, by a lot of different people because oats generally have a bland taste. So they are mainly only eaten by the Scottish and Irish. And as you can see from this quote, um, the British people made fun of people who ate oats, but um, the Scottish responded with, that's why England has such good horses and Scottish, Scotland has such fine men. So there has to be some truth in um, the benefits of oats. <laughs> and um, they're also used um, as to distill to make alcohol. Some of the ethno-medicinal uses include um, primarily for the topical application to the skin um, by the ancient Greeks and Romans. Um, there are medical texts by Pliny and um, Dioscorides also wrote about it in De Materia Medica. Um, they used, basically they would take whole oats and then rub them on the skin um, and um, that was used to treat um, eczema and other skin disorders um, back in ancient times. And then also Ayurvedic practitioners used oats to treat the opium addiction. They actually used a tincture of oats, which is um, when it's dissolved in alcohol. Um, and this is thought to be because oats have sedative properties and it acts on the central nervous system as a depressant. So, um, And then finally, ancient Greeks and Romans also used oats as, anxiolytic and to, as an anxiolytic and to promote cognitive function. Um, and many of these ethnomedicinal uses have remained the same, um, especially in the use for skin disorders. Um, we'll see that they have many different uses today in camp therapies. So um, these properties of oats are mainly, um, so these are the main con chemical constituents, um, but I just wanted to focus mainly on two particular compounds. This is beta-glucan right there. And beta-glucan is a soluble dietary fiber. Um, it's uh, present in about 5% of an oat group. And um, it has a high viscosity, and it's really um, important in many of the different emollient properties of oats, as well as um, just other medicinal properties. And um, oats also contain 
a pretty high percentage of polyphenols, um, but in particular the avena anthermides, um, which are unique to oats, are um, probably one of the most important compounds found in them. And um, they have, as we'll see, they exhibit a lot of different antioxidant properties as well as um, anti-inflammatory properties. Um, so just a summary of the in vivo and in vitro um, studies of oats. Um, first, there have been a lot of studies on the antioxidant properties of oats, especially um, by avena anthermides, um, which are able to, um, they're able to prevent the production of reductive oxidative species, and they have about 10 to 30 times the antioxidant activity of the other phenolic compounds found in oats. So even though they are present in a pretty small amount, only about 0.03% of oats, um, they have a very important properties. Um, they also can inhibit NF kappa B signaling, um, which is which um, inhibits the production of interleukin eight, um, which is also impo important um, for its anti-inflammatory properties, um, and it also has anti-irritant properties as well. Um, there is an in vivo study that showed that um, mice that were uh, there were two groups of mice that were injected with um, an in, a pro itch compound called 4880, and um, the Avena anthermide treated mice scratched about 40% less than uh, the other mice, which is um, also kind of uh, proves its anti pruritic properties as well. Um, oats also have emollient properties um, based on beta glucans' high viscosity, and um, they can produce and beta-glucans can penetrate the dermis layer of the skin and produce collagen, um, which has also been important in the reduction of wrinkles. And finally, um, and, uh, oats have also been found to have anxiolytic properties as well. So a brief overview of the clinical studies. Um, oats have, uh, there's been a lot of research about oats and the reduction of heart disease. Um, in particular, um, Oats are, beta glucans are able, are basically able to bind to bile acids and cholesterol, um, which increases the bile acid excre excretion um, and it increases the amount of cholesterol receptors, which are able to intake and um, clear cholesterol from the blood, which reduces LDL levels and um, also just um, reduces overall cholesterol content in the blood. And there's also been some studies that have shown um, oats to lower blood pressure, but there needs to be more research to conclude that. Um, oats have also been able to help prevent diabetes um, by lowering blood glucose levels. And um, also, um, as I mentioned before, they're definitely important in the use of skin, for skin disorders, um, reduction of skin irritation and inflammation, and also um, they can reduce the amount of uh, wrinkles. Um, for celiacs, uh, people with celiac disease, oats provide an alternative food source. Um, so as long as uh, the oats do not have, contain any wheat in them um, and they're in their pure form, um, they can be tolerated by people with celiac disease. Um, and also, uh, oats are also used in the treatment of constipation because beta-glucans and their high viscosity can in increase fecal wet weight and um, relieve constipation and prevent colon cancer by inhibiting the growth of carcinoma cells. And then finally, um, there's been some research um, about the treat for the treatment of impotence. Um, there's that phrase, sowing one's wild oats, um, which has been widely mar marketed. Um, and although there have been some studies that have proven this property of oats, um, it's kind of inconclusive right now and definitely marketed though. Um, and then oats are generally regarded as safe. Um, there are no known contraindications. Um, in 2003, the FDA actually approved a form of oats called colloidal oatmeal, um, which is, as seen in that picture over there, a finely ground oatmeal. And um, it's used as a skin protectorant. And actually, um, in current uses today, Avino, the skin product, actually contains 1% colloidal oatmeal. Um, so there are definitely um, some uh, cosmetic uses as well as um, for the treatment of like dermatitis and eczema and things like that. And of course, oats are commonly found in food, in oatmeal, 
cereals, breads, granola, and oat flour. Um, and then also for skin uses, colloidal oatmeal is um, widely used to treat chicken pox as well. And um, there, it's also f uh, sold in supplement form, as you can see over there. Um, but, and these supplement forms are marketed for, as an aphrodisiac or for nervous system health. However, um, it's not really known whether these supplements are effective. And then finally, um, it's also, there's been a synthetic drug used in Japan called tranolast, and it has a structure similar to an avena anthermide. And um, this drug is actually used as an antihistamine. And because avena anthermides have antipyruidic properties, um, it kind of makes sense that tranolast has, is an antihistamine. So in conclusion, um, the uses of avena sativa have definitely evolved throughout the centuries. Um, since it was first used as, a, as fodder and animal bedding, um, to now it's common uses in foods and skin um, diseases. Um, it's a healthy part of the diet. It's definitely accessible for everyone to use. It's grown widely throughout the world. And um, the wide variety of health benefits from the beta-glucans and avena anthermides have definitely um, you know, become popular throughout, uh, recently. And I think that there are still more benefits to be discovered. Oh, sorry. <laughs>